Welcome back to the walkthrough of the Thermo Fisher Scientific Junior Innovators Challenge application. In this video, we'll be going over part three, project information. Some general advice for this section is to consider it to be like a judging interview. If you're having trouble getting started, try answering the questions out loud, recording your answers, and then using this as a base for your, your written responses. The questions might seem less overwhelming this way. Remember, you also have probably already answered these questions at your local science fair. Note that this section is also two pages long, so you'll need to click next at the bottom of the first page to continue. For this section, we recommend writing all your responses in a Word document first. This way, you'll always have a copy of your responses in case of any technical glitches on the application site. So the first question in this section asks you to pick a project category. You can choose the same category that you did at your local science fair or a different one. Um, and these categories also might look different from the categories you had at your local fair. If you're stuck, just try to consider what type of expert you think would best understand the work that you've done. You can also click the link here and see descriptions of all of the categories um, to help you decide. Next, we ask for your project title. Um, this is so that we can show your project title on any materials we have if you're selected as one of the top 300 inter junior innovators or 30 finalists. Um, you can uh, change your project title from the title you used at your local fair. Uh, we do ask though, if you are a member of a team project that you and your teammates um, use the same title and that just helps us um, link your projects together. In addition to the full project title, we also ask for a short title for your project, and this will be used in some printed materials if you make it to the finalist level. And then there's also a space here um, to describe any special characters or symbols that you might have for your project title. So if you have, say, you know, the name of a particular plant species in your project title, um, and you want you know, to use the full scientific name that needs ital uh, italics. Unfortunately, it won't, you're not able to format the text in this um, text box or it really in anywhere in the application. So in um, this text box, I can just say that the plant species should be in those tabs. And that way in any of our listings of your project title, we can make sure it's formatted properly. Next, we're gonna ask you to remind us if this is a team project and just uh, remember that each member of your team must submit their own application. So before we get into the next part, which is uh, the questions related to your project overview, um, you'll notice that we have word limits in this section. So word limits are intended to give everyone equal space um, and help you answer the questions and present your material precisely. So you'll see once you start typing in a text box that uh, it'll give you a countdown for how many words you have and um, entered and how many you have remaining. So if you're having trouble, just write out what you wanna say in that practice word document, um, then edit your text to fit the word limit. So concise writing and staying on topic for each of these specific questions is the goal. So don't feel pressured to use all words in the word limit. If you don't need to use the maximum number of words, then don't, that's totally fine. So the first question here in the project overview um, asks just for your project summary. So you can either submit an abstract or create an elevator pitch for your project. The goal of this question is just to give, you know, an overview of your research project. So there are some sub questions here that uh, help you do that. You know, you want to make sure you're um, giving some background information about your project, why it's important to research. Um, you want to talk about your research question and a short summary of your methods and results and conclusions. And that goes for either the abstract or the elevator pitch. 
Next, we want to know about the inspiration for your project. So we want to know where did you get this idea? You might have got your idea from an online resource or another external source, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but you should describe that here and you should describe what uh, or how um, did you make that idea um, your project? How did you make it unique? So again, you can describe if there was a personal experience um, uh, or an individual that helped inspire your choice of this of this topic. Um, again, make sure you're describing that source um, from if, if it was an external source that you used. Next, just a simple yes or no question. If you're selected as a top 300 junior innovator or 30 uh, top 30 finalist, we want to know if we have permission to share this summary, your project summary with media to help tell your story. And then lastly, we ask if this project is a continuation of a past year's research project. So if you click yes here, you're going to be asked to briefly describe how your current project builds off of that past research. And particularly, we want to know what you changed or what you what is new about this year's project. So remember that in our rules, um, the project that you submit for this, uh, this year should only include a maximum of one year's research. And that should be true um, for competing at your local science fair as well. So we know that research can be a long process and you might have had an idea that you're really excited about last year and you've thought of a different way, you know, if you thought of a way to further that research, um, which is great, but you should be doing something new with that original idea, not submitting the same exact project multiple years in a row. Moving on to page two of part three. On this page, you're going to be asked more questions about um, the details of your project. So through the list of questions you'll see on this page, we're trying to help you break down your project in a way that gives our judges what they need to review the work. For engineering projects, we've offered an alternative phrasing of the question that better applies to the engineering design process um, for most questions. Remember that you should answer these questions with enough detail so the judges understand what you did, how you did it, why you chose to do certain things a certain way, and what your results were. Many of the questions will contain sub-questions in bullets. You don't necessarily need to answer all of these sub-questions for a given prompt, but they are there to guide you in how you can best respond to that prompt. So we'll talk about that as we go through each question. Ultimately, remember that in this section, the judges can't see your project board and they can't talk to you to ask follow-up questions. So you really wanna explain why, why you did anything that you did for your research project. The first question here is just asking what was your research question or for engineering projects, what was the human need that you were addressing or problem that you wanted to solve? So why, what were you investigating? That's what you're going to describe here. Next, we're asking you to tell us your scientific hypothesis or your engineering design criteria. So what did you think would happen based on your question or your, your uh, problem that you wanted to solve? Um, what were the goals that you set for your design? Uh, and again, remember to explain why. The next question asks to explain your methodology and procedures. So you wanna give detail in this section. You want the judges to know what data you collected, how you collected it, engineering projects, how did you build your design? What were your testing procedures? Um, and what were your, your variables? Overall, this question is asking, how did you do your research? It's fine to format your answer to this question as a list. Um, it could be a step-by-step -step list. It can be bullets. Um, it can be full sentences and paragraphs. Um, either way, you just want to make sure you're being thorough and don't, again, don't assume that the judges know why you did something a certain way. To help explain things better to, to the judges as well, you can always... Uh, reference items in your visual aid that you want to, them to refer to while they're reading a certain part of your response. So for example, 
if you have a chart that describes steps you took um, as a part of your methodology, you can say, see chart one, visual aid, and then they'll be able to go back, go to your visual aid and know exactly what you're talking about. Next, this is asking uh, about the analysis of your data. So here, what you wanna know, um, you wanna talk about the story that your data tells um, or the observations about your testing of your engineering design tell. You want to describe the results of your data collection, if you noticed any patterns in the data, talk about any statistical methods you used or special analysis you used on your, on your data. And again, if you did use any of these, why did you pick those methods? Um, and how did you determine right, the appropriate tests to use? Again, this is a good uh, good section to refer back to your visual aid um, in describing your data. Next, we ask about your conclusions. What conclusions did you reach? In your conclusions, you wanna revisit your hypothesis um, or your engineering design criteria. And you wanna describe if your data supports your hypothesis uh, why or why not? What do your results mean based on your original question? It's okay. Remember, if your if your hypothesis wasn't proved, um, if your data did not support your hypothesis, uh, as long as you're describing why, and you understand, you know, why you think that happened, you can describe any limitations that came up during your experimentation, um, how that might have affected your results. Like, did you have uh, if you didn't have enough time or didn't have the right resources? Um, and if you have any future directions or next steps, what would that be? You don't have to have any, um, but if you did, this is where you describe them. Next, we're asking what problems arose during experimentation and how you trouble. Um, how did you troubleshoot those? So. You can expand a little bit here on any factors that impacted your research and how you were able to address those. Oftentimes problems can come up that you didn't plan for or weren't expecting. Um, and in this question or in your, in your response to this question, you can talk about how you helped solve for those problems, if any came up. Next, we're gonna ask uh, where you conducted your experimentation. So you can select multiple options here. If you selected that you worked in a lab or a workplace or somewhere else, we're gonna want you to specify what that place was in the text box. And then you're also gonna have this question to answer um, that will come up only if you select those last three options. Um, and it's just asking for more specific details about the location of your experimentation and how you gained access to that research location. For example, if you worked at a lab, did you reach out um, to someone uh, that you found just via a cold email? Did your school help uh, establish a connection? Did a family member um, help establish a connection or work in this lab? Any of those options are perfectly fine, um, but you should describe them here. Along those lines, um, we know that research is often a team effort. Even if you did your uh, a solo project, you might have had uh, help, someone who might have helped contribute to your ideation or help uh, contribute resources to your project. And so this question is asking for a little bit more detail about that. You should describe um, how you conducted your research in terms of where and what any, if there was any special equipment you used, um, who su supervised or collaborated with you on your research, and what were their contribu uh, contributions, particularly if you worked at a lab, what role did your mentor or other people at the lab play in your research? And ultimately, you know, as I said, we know that, um, especially at the middle school level, you might have had some help along the way, and that's perfectly fine. Um, your, your research and your research project can be yours and you uh, have done student uh, independent student research um, with the assistance of someone who helped connect you to resources that you needed for your project. 
or someone that helped um, formulate some ideas or, or it just bounce ideas off of. And that's all perfectly fine, but it's important to disclose that information. We don't want um, students to be overstating the uh, role that they might've had in their research project. Um, scientific integrity is very important. So like I said, if you had help in your project, that's perfectly fine and you should just describe it here. This last one um, is asking if you attended any paid research programs where you worked for your, uh, where you conducted your project. For example, if you attended a summer camp that helped, um, that's you know where you started your project or got the ideas for, for it and had you know, mentors that might've helped you along the process. Again, this is totally acceptable, um, but we ask that you describe it here. If you selected that you worked in uh, a team project on the previous page, this question is gonna pop up and it's just asking for you to list each team member and explain their role. So this is your opportunity to just explain how work was divided between all team members. Maybe you all worked on every piece of the project or together, or maybe you divided and conquered. Um, either way, it's totally acceptable. We just wanna know how that division of labor happened. And then last, if you have any references or citations that you want to include, you can. So if you already had them um, from your research report or project board um, that you presented at your local fair, um, this is your chance to include those here. If you didn't have any need to make any references or citations um, when you were presenting before, you don't have to add them here. This is an optional question. Once you're done with this page, uh, go ahead and hit mark as complete. Um, and then you are done with part three.